Hi, my name is Matt, and I wanted to do a little um, a video uh, to illustrate a refactor I did recently uh, to use a really cool tool in I, uh, NumPy called Einsum. Einsum is this really powerful way of expressing computation. And uh, yeah, I just thought this was a really uh, illustrative example of it, so I wanted to share. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use this uh, deck, which is just basically a bunch of um, uh, small NumPy estimates. Everything we're going to do is in NumPy. Uh, and Having said that, the, the functionality that Einsum provides is available in TensorFlow or JAX or PyTorch or whatever. So it's, it's available in lots of places. And uh, the only user-defined function I'm going to use here is this, um, this R&D function, where I'm just going to be using it to make random uh, arrays of various sizes, just to sort of illustrate some shapes and things. So let's go. Um, let's start with um, you know, a pretty classic thing, matrix multiply. So this is a you know, bread and butter of what we want to do. And I, I, you know, this is a two-dimensional matrix multiply. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. If we have a uh, classic, you know, what the I, J, K sort of view of a uh, 2D matrix multiply, but an I by J matrix, and I'm allowed to multiply that by a J by K matrix, because these are J's are the same, five and five, and I get a, an I by K matrix. So, you know, we use this a lot, matrix multiply. It's a pretty fundamental thing. And, um, you know, in terms of use cases, wh wh when do we want to do these things? One thing that I find I end up doing a lot, which is going to relate to the later piece, is this idea of, uh, I might have two sets of embeddings, I call them A and B, and uh, they're both 32 dimensional, and I've got five A's and 10 B's, and I wanna see uh, all pairwise dot products uh, for you know, whatever reason, for similarity or something. So you know, I, I could do it in a really naive way, I can loop over both and sort of calculate each one, but it, that would be crazy, I can use linear algebra for this, so I'll use a map model. And the only thing that's really important about this is I need to uh, be careful of shapes. So the IJK idea needs the, the IJ by JK, which means this 10 by 32 isn't quite right. I need to transpose. It. So I convert this 1032 into 3210 and I get the result of 510. So, you know, we do this, we do this sort of thing a lot. Uh, use this matrix multiply and we, and we always know that we need to do this transpose. So, and, and that's fine, we do it all the time. Uh, an interesting thing about MatMol, uh, some people don't know, is that it naturally, hands back, naturally handles batches. And it does that by allowing these a leading dimension. So if I do a IJ by JK multiply, I can add this 10 at the front. And what this is totally equivalent to is just doing 10 matrix multiplies. And, you know, we, we want to do this and we favor this if we can uh, often because um, by doing it in one op like this, the MatMol with this, with this denser array, uh, we, you, we can invoke lots of amazing uh, acceleration under the hood in the libraries that sort of do this. So this is very common use case again, this idea of batching. And actually, MatMol will allow any number of leading dimensions. Uh, all that matters is that that those final ones uh, follow that IJK rule for matrix multiply. So if we're doing 10, 20, 30, we'll, we'll do, they'll just carry along and we'll end up doing a bunch of these matrix multiplies in, in, in parallel. Cool. So that's just a you know, behavior of MatMol, so, so to speak. So let's start talking about the actual thing I was doing, and, and I'll build it up a little bit by a little bit, still in NumPy, um, you know, just vanilla NumPy, vanilla, or whatever. Um, one thing I was doing is I, I have this uh, set of uh, vectors and matrices, or vectors I need to compare, and um, there's a query. So I've got this one 32-dimensional uh, you know, embedded thing, query, and I want to compare this to 10 keys. And, um, uh, you know, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. Uh, it's interesting now we're talking about a vector by a matrix and but we can use MatMol again because of a bunch of assumed behavior about uh, how to handle a vector and sort of turn it into a matrix in terms of, um, you know, things like if we look at this V1 case, uh, the query here, even though it's just E, can be, you know, thought of as one by E. Uh, we can sort of think of it as a, as a row vector. And if that's the case, then we get the right thing. We get one by E times, again, the transpose, E by 10, and we get the 10 result. In this case, we can also, sort of um, uh, use the keys in the first place and not have to flip them. So we'll get the 10, 10 by E. And, and this works because in this case, the query can be interpreted um, as like a column vector. So E by one. And we get the same thing we want. We get what we need in terms of that inner axis. We got 10 by E, E by one, and it results in 10, one. So these are, yeah, I'm just down the bottom here for completeness. I've got a little bit where I, you know, just, just validate the shapes end up being the same. You know, are they equivalent or not shape wise? And, you know, other old world values the same. So these two things we can see are equivalent. But it does rely a little bit on this behavior of MatMol when we're passing this vector and matrix combo. So it's just, you know, something to think in our heads. The actual thing I was trying to do though was, wasn't 
one query versus 10 keys. It was 100 key queries versus 100 sets of 10 keys. So I've got a batch here, I've got this hand at the front, it's a natural batch. So I'm doing the, I want to do this in batch. I want to do the, this one query against the 10 for all 100 in parallel. I don't want to, I don't want to fall loop it. So um, I should be able to use MatMol Mat because it, there's a batched uh, sort of, you know, understanding in MatMol. But I have to be a little bit more careful about things. Like I can't use this assumed behavior of things um, in terms of uh, like how, how, how to handle this E as a row or column anymore. So there's two parts of this, two things I need to do. The first is I need to, you know, uh, massage the query a little bit in terms of being a little bit more explicit about the shape I want it to be in before it goes to the mammal. I'm going to do that pretty, you know, it's pretty straightforward. I, I just reshape it from NE to N1E. And, you know, this reshape, um, this idea of adding a, an extra axis with of size one, it, you know, it's basically a no-op, isn't it? It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not like I do this deep copy of the data or anything. It's just about the view on how I access the data, the shape really. But, but I get this now shape, which is 100, the end, by 1 by 32. I also need to do something to the keys before I call MatMol. And um, in this case, I'll, I'm doing a transpose. And, then, and again, I need to be a little bit more specific about what I want from the transpose. In, in the last one, we used the dot T, which is the when I do the TD, 2D, I've just swapped. In this case, I'm using the former transpose where I'm being very explicit about the order of the axis that I want. So I want the zeroth axis first, the end, but I want you to swap the last two. So 1 and 2 get swapped around 2, 1. And this gives us a shape we need to invoke the uh, bat batch map mole behavior. I've got the 100 at the front and I've got 132 uh, going to 3210. Cool. And uh, that works. So I can do that map mole and I get the right thing. It, it sort of it's, it leaves something around though, it leaves this inner axis around. It doesn't clean up quite nicely. Um, but that's okay as well because I can use squeeze. I can squeeze that out. So um, squeeze is just an operator that throws away axis of, of size one because really they don't, know, they don't really. Uh, serve any purpose apart from you know understanding in terms of shape. So this works. I, I get the right thing I want. I'm getting my hundred uh, sets of comparisons, and I'm getting ten for each of those. But you know, it, it it just feels wrong. There's something wrong about this. That you know, I'm wanting to use this map mole, but there's a lot of assumed things I need to know about map mole, and then there's a lot of sort of coercion of stuff to get it in the right shape to invoke that behaviour, and then a bit of cleanup. You know, and you know, my my NumPy is not great, so there's many. There's probably a, 50 different ways that I could have done this that was better. But the one I chose, because um, I'm trying to get better and better, is, is this tool called Einstein. It's very powerful, and, and I'm coming around to it more and more and more. And so let's go through these same sort of examples again, but using uh, this different way of representing the, this type of calculation using the Einstein. Okay, so let's start all the way back at the map mole again. Uh, again, an i, j, j, k sort of uh, multiply. This is the, the one we started with map mole. Uh, we're going to use this different function called einsum now. And einsum takes the operands, the A and B, but it also takes this um, string, which represents the computation we want to do. So if you're a big fan of typing, uh, I'm too bad. This is just a string that's interpreted per character, so it's, it's, it's terribly typed. But anyway, we can, we can walk through what all of these things mean. Um, this, this first piece is a comma-separated list that describes the operands. So we've got two things here in this comma-separated list, one for A, one for B. This first one's for A, I, J. And what we're describing here is these two characters because A is two dimensional. So, uh, and we're giving names, basically, these character names to the axes. When you say the first axis is I, the second axis is J. And, you know, these are actually arbitrary. Well, we can use whatever we like, but for now, let's go I, J. And what I'm saying about the second um, matrix is that um, it's also got two axes, but I'm going to J, K. I'm, I'm saying here that this J um, is the same as this J in terms of when I'm doing some reduction later. I want these two to be connected to each other. And if I do this matrix multiply, what do I get? There's the J's sort of do reduce against each other. And I get the thing I'm looking for is the IK reduction. I want to reduce to this size. And so if I look at these two and I do both of these, I'll do M and I'll do E and I'll just compare things again. These do the same computation. So, that, so that's, um, that's interesting. You know, it's a, the Einstein one is a lot more, um, I need to be a lot more explicit about things. So maybe, maybe this isn't the best use of Einstein. But um, you know, I can see how now uh, I'm describing the computation that's the same as MapMol. Let's look at that second example I had where I talked about the two sets of things. Um, I had A and B, where A was five uh, you know, embeddings and B was 10 embeddings. Now you recall when I did this before to use MapMol, I needed to transpose B. I needed to put this 32 into the J place so the MapMol would do the right thing. But in Einstein, we don't do this. 
you know, anytime I don't need to talk about transposers, instead I talk about it based on what are the axes in terms of their, what their order is and what they want the reduction. So the difference between this slide and the last slide is this K and J are swapped because literally they are swapped and that's what a transpose is, isn't it? So now I'm saying that I want you to reduce over this outer axis and I want to be left with high K. So this is, this is interesting because it's more explicit about what we want the computation to be without having to know, you know, the fundamentals of matrix multiplication, which, well, you know, we do just, they're burnt into our brain whether we like it or not. But this transpose here is, 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 feels a little bit clumsy in the sense that it's, it's, it's there because of the behavior of MATMOL, not because it's there because it's fundamental to what we're trying to do. Whereas this Einstein expression is, it's very clear, explicit what it's trying to do. So we make things a little bit more complicated or less complicated potentially first off. I mentioned this idea that the, the, the characters can be whatever we like. So, you know, it's a very, very poor, weak form of documentation, but if we need to, we can give them maybe slightly more sensible names. I can say that these are the A embeddings and these are the B embeddings. And I want to go to, to the product of AB and I'll do that by reducing over those embeddings. Um, and, you know, arguably that is all isn't clear. I'm not sure, but I think it's important that <clears throat> we have the power at least to do it. Cool, cool. So let's go, let's keep going. Let's talk about the batch one. So we've got this leading dimension again. And you recall that in uh, MATMOL, we sort of get this automatically because it just sort of handles it. But in Einstein, Einstein sum, we need to be uh, uh, more explicit. Uh, and, but, it's, but it's not too bad. It's, it's pretty straightforward. We just have this leading N. It's literally the N at the front. And everything else is the same. IJ, JK goes to IK. We just carry that N along. And it does the right thing. Um, we get the same shape and get true. So again, being explicit um, has, has been more so certainly more documenting and, and you know without having to understand the behavior of matt molars like some you know what's the default cool let's start with this um one i talked about with the query embedding and the keys embedding and again what did we do before we were doing this thing something like this we do the query embedding and the keys transpose uh, because um we knew that the query would be interpretable as as um a, you know a matrix with one of the axes being one and the keys had to be transposed to come across but in benign sum uh, again, we can be again more explicit about things. E, the query, is just is just a vector. So I'm only having to pass one argument here, this one character to represent its shape, because there is only one. Uh, I don't have to do like a you know an implicit reshape with a one to make it like a column or a. And um, the keys and the embeddings again, I just literally talk about what they are. I don't need to transpose, and then I'm just trying to do the reduction to k. So I'm trying to say uh, if there are k keys. I just want to reduce across the K and, and E sort of is the explicit instruction about how to do that reduction because the E's are the same. So that's cool. I've, already I feel like, you know, this is, this is more describing. Let's talk about this final one. This is the, this is the, the killer one, I guess, the, the one we started with where I'm trying to do this batch form of things again. And just let's recall what we did for the MATMOL. Uh, this is much more explicit reshape uh, and transpose of the query and keys to invoke uh, the, the black Mac uh, black magic behavior of Matt Mole and then the squeeze away to get rid of it. And again, unsurprisingly, as the purpose of this talk, it turns out that the Einstein one, I think, is much clearer, much more explicit. We're starting with NE, which is that NE, uh, query embeddings. The next one we're just fully describing is NKE. And we're just saying this is the reduction I want. I don't need to reshape. I don't need to transpose. Um, I don't need to squeeze. Just make it so. And so this last one, I think, is a, is a beautiful, um, beautiful sort of, you know, much more succinct, clearer um, expression of what we wanted to do. So um, yeah, hopefully uh, that um, motivated you to try ISUM if you haven't already. And um, I think it's really cool. Uh, thanks for watching.